Assalamu alaikum students. This is your teacher Muhammad Umar Khatak for the subject Human Resource Management. This is our 23rd lecture and chapter number 9. And today the topic of our discussion is Format of Evaluation and Evaluation Technique. Format of Evaluation To provide information that can serve the organizational goals and complies with the law, a performance evaluation system must provide accurate and reliable data. The ability to generate accurate and reliable data is enhanced if a systematic process is followed. The following six steps can provide the basis for such a systematic process. Establish performance standards for each position and the criteria for evaluation. Establish performance evaluation policies on when to rate, how often to rate, and who should rate. Have raters gather data on employees' performance. Have raters and some employees in some systems evaluate employees' performance. Discuss the evaluation with the employee. Make decisions and file the evaluation. Step 1 of this process is completed when an organization conducts a job analysis. One of the primary reasons for conducting job analysis is to write job descriptions. An important part of job description is a clear statement of the performance dimensions and standards expected from incumbents. In addition, the job analysis should have determined how these dimensions and standards are going to be measured. Establish a criteria. The dimensions of performance upon which an employee is evaluated are called the criteria of evaluation. Examples include quality of work, quantity of work and cost of work. One of the major problems with many performance evaluations is that they require supervisors to make person's evaluation rather than performance evaluation. That is, the evaluation criteria in some systems is the personality of the incumbents rather than their level of performance. An effective criterion should possess the following characteristics. Reliability. A measure of performance must be consistent. Perhaps the most important type of consistency for a performance measure is inter-rater reliability. If different raters view the same worker, they should arrive at similar conclusions about the quality of that worker's output. Relevance. A measure of performance must be related to the actual output of an incumbent as logically as possible. Sensitivity. Any criterion must be able to reflect the difference between high and low performers. That is, high and low performers must receive criterion scores that accurately represents the difference in their performance. Practicality. The criterion must be measurable and data collection cannot be inefficient or too disruptive. Most studies indicate that multiple criteria are necessary to measure performance completely. The multiple criteria are added together statistically or combined into a single multifaceted measure. The choice of criteria is not an easy process. One must be careful to evaluate both activities, for example, number of calls a salesperson makes and results, for example, dollars of sale. A combination of criteria using results and activities is desirable. How do you weigh the importance of multiple criteria? For example, if a salesperson is being evaluated on number of calls 
as well as sales dollars and is high on one and low on another, what is the person's overall rating? Management must weigh these criteria. Who should evaluate the employee? When should evaluation be done? And how often? A survey conducted by Human Resource Institute found that only 36% of over 1,000 respondents actually consider performance management essential. Also, only 17% indicated that their employees believe the process of appraisal provides value to the organization. For those organizations that continue to rely on annual evaluations, there are two choices for when to actually conduct the evaluations. In many organizations, performance evaluations are scheduled for arbitrary dates, such as the date the person was hired, anniversary date. Alternatively, all employees may be evaluated on or near single calendar date. Although the single day approach is convenient administratively, it probably is not a good idea. It requires Rater to spend a lot of time conducting evaluation interviews and completing forms at one time, which may lead them to want to get it over with quickly. In addition, it may not be related to normal task cycle of the employee. This factor can make it difficult for the managers to evaluate performance effectively. It makes more sense to schedule the evaluation of the completion of a task cycle. For example, tax accountants see their year as July 1st to July 2nd. For most professors and teachers, the year starts at the beginning of the fall term and terminates after the spring term. For others, without a clear task cycle based on dates, one way to set the dates is by setting goals. Goals can be established in a way that the managers and employee agree on the task cycle, which terminates with an evaluation of the employee performance during the cycle. Performance evaluation is another HRM activity that involves cooperation between the line operating managers and the human resource specialist. The operating managers, immediate supervisors, is, however, the person responsible for conducting the actual appraisal in a vast majority of cases. There are other possibilities that organizations should consider as well when it comes to evaluating employees. Rating by a committee of several supervisors. The supervisors chosen are those most likely to come in contact with the employee. This approach has advantages of offsetting bias on the part of one supervisor and additional information to the evaluation, especially if it follows a group meeting format. Rating by the employee's peers, co-workers. In the peer evaluation system, the co-workers must know the level of performance of the employee being evaluated. For this system to work, it is preferable for the evaluating peers to trust one another and not to be in competition for raises and promotions. This approach may be useful when the tasks of the work unit require frequent working contact among peers. Rating by employee subordinate Exxon has used this system and it is used in some universities. Students evaluate the faculty's teaching effectiveness. It is used more for the developmental aspect of performance evaluation than are some of the other methods. Managers are less likely to accept being rated by subordinates if the information is going to be used for administrative purposes for example, raises and promotions, than if it is used for development. This source of rating information is also more acceptable if the managers believe that their subordinates are familiar with the job. Also, 
Subordinates' evaluation should probably be restricted to people-oriented issues such as leadership and delegation, rather than organizing, planning, and other less easily observed aspects of the manager's performance. Rating by someone outside the immediate work situation Known as the field review technique, this method uses a specialized appraiser from the outside job setting, such as a human resource specialist to rate the employee. This approach is often costly, so it is generally used only for exceptionally important jobs. It might be used for the entire workforce if accusation of prejudice must be countered. A crucial consideration is that outsider evaluator is not likely to have as much data as evaluators in any of the other four approaches. The use of an outside evaluator represents a somewhat typical approach to appra appraising performance. Self-evaluation In this case, the employee evaluates herself or himself with the techniques used by other evaluators. This approach seems to be used more often for developmental as opposed to evaluative aspects of performance evaluation. It is also used to evaluate an employee who works in physical isolation. Self-evaluation has often been met with skepticism by organizations because the self-interest of the employee could outweigh an objective evaluation. However, research has demonstrated that self-evaluations can correlate reasonably well with supervisors' ratings, especially if the employees have information about their co-workers' performance. Employee can provide accurate appraisal of their own performances. Rating by a combination of approaches. Surveys and research indicate that most employees are not satisfied with one or more aspects of performance evaluation systems. Organizations are experimenting with alternatives to traditional supervisor only downward appraisal. One system of appraising performance that appears to be growing in popularity is 360 degrees feedback. As the name implies, this method uses multiple appraisers including supervisors, subordinates and peers of the target person. In some cases, it also includes self-appraisal. The appraisal is 360 degrees in that information is collected and feedback is provided in full circular fashion, top to bottom and back to the top. The upward portion of the feedback program involves an anonymous system whereby team members provide information about their supervisors using a questionnaire. Then these results are collated so that a report can be prepared for the manager. Anonymity is generally considered important except in an environment where there is an exceptionally high degree of trust. At Google's, employees identify peer reviews from any part of the entire organization, not just from their team or department. Once identified, these reviewers complete an online evaluation of the employee in question. Reviewers are encouraged to use constructive criticism in their reviews. Research suggests that including upward and peer feedback in an appraisal system can have positive effects on manager's behavior. In addition, these effects seem to be sustainable over time. Thus, there appears to be a future for 360-degree program. 
And while these programs were originally believed to be useful primarily to develop feedback, some estimates suggest that 90% of the companies using 360-degree feedback program use the information to help with personnel decisions such as merit pay increases and promotions. However, improper attempts to introduce 360-degree feedback systems into cultures not prepared for them, for example, when there is a low level of trust or too much competition, can have predictably disastrous effect. The 360-degree feedback approach can be viewed as a method for managers to acquire information about their style, methods and approach. There is a listening advantage provided by the 360-degree feedback approach. Selected Evaluation Technique There are many ways to evaluate employees. Some of the most common will be described in this lecture. Generally speaking, these methods can be divided into two broad categories. One category consists of methods that evaluate employees individually. In other words, the supervisor evaluates each employee without explicit direct compar comparisons with other employees. Plus, the standards of performance are defined without reference to other employees. The second category depends on multiple person evaluation. Multiple person evaluation requires the supervisor to directly and in intentionally compare the performance of the employee with that of the other employees. Thus, the standard of performance are relative. An employee's performance is defined as good or bad on the basis of comparison with other employees' performance. Individual Evaluation Methods Now, the first one that we'll discuss is Graphic Rating Scale. Several individual evaluation methods are used in business today, but the oldest and perhaps the most common one is the graphic rating scale. The rater is presented with a set of traits and is asked to rate employees on each of the characteristics listed. The number of characteristics rated varies from a few to several dozen. The rating can be in a series of boxes or they can be on a continuous scale. In the latter case, the rater places a check above descriptive words ranging from none to maximum. Typically, these ratings are then assigned points. For example, outstanding may be assigned a score of 4 and unsatisfactory a score of 0. Total scores are then computed. Uh, in some plans, greater weight may be given to traits that are regarded as more important. Raters are more often asked to explain each rating with a sentence or two. Now, the second technique that we are going to study in individual evaluation methods is forced choice. Several potential problems with graphic rating scales led to the development of alternative rating methods. Graphic rating scales are thought to lead to many different errors of evaluation. Forced choice methods were developed because graphic rating scales allowed supervisors to rate every, everyone high. As a result, there was no way to distinguish between good or poor performance. Recall the sensitivity that sensitivity is a necessary characteristic of a good criterion. In a forced choice format, the rater must choose from a set of descriptive statements about an employee. Forced choice aims items are usually prepared by the HR specialists. Supervisors or those or others familiar with the ratee's performance then evaluate how applicable each statement is. That is, they determine which statement describes effective or ineffective behavior. Neutral statements are also sometimes included in forced choice items. When the supervisor evaluates their employees, they check the statement that describes the employee or they rank the statements from the most or least descriptive. The HR department then adds up the number of statements in each category, for example, effective behavior, and they are summed into an effective Ness index. Forced choice can be used by supervisors, superiors, peers, subordinates, or combination of these in evaluating employees. This is the end of the lecture. Thank you.